education at Lahore University of Management uh, Sciences. Uh, and uh, we are uh, here welcoming uh, our first batch, our first group of alumni from the 20, 2021 uh, graduate, uh, the batch that graduated in 2021, just over this past summer. And uh, today joining, my name is Razia Sadiq. I'm an associate professor at the School of Education. Uh, I would like to welcome all the School of Education and broader LUMS community, whoever is joining us, students, colleagues, uh, and uh, alumni, if there are any others from the ones who are our guests today. And especially I would like to uh, welcome our three alumni from 2021, uh, Mehreen Hussain, uh, Fatima Umar, and Humayun Ansari. Welcome, and it's a privilege to have you uh, on this panel, and we really are excited to welcome you and learn more about your experiences uh, over the last two years and moving forward, uh, what you plan to do with that. So briefly, I'm just going to introduce everyone. Um, in no particular order. Um, so uh, Mehreen Hussain is a work, has a background in economics and she has been teaching in higher education and school and also been involved in curriculum development. She has been uh, involved in the development uh, sector also. And she is currently working on school reform as a member on the board of governors of uh, nasir -e Khusro Model Academy in Hunza. Uh, and her research centers on understanding the educational transition of youth in Gilgit Baltistan and how this shapes their identities and aspirations. Welcome, Marine. Thank uh, you. Then we have Fatima Umar. Uh, Fatima Umar is uh, currently working at LAMS uh, in the Office of Academic Advising uh, and Student Success success and her role over there involves developing data-driven projects to improve academic, non-academic and professional well-being of different student populations across uh, campus. Um, she is the co-founder also of a school for a social and emotional learning, uh, social socio-emotional learning application targeted at children. Um, and she is currently developing that. Welcome, Fatima. Thank you. Uh, and then we have Humayu uh, Ansari, who is um, a currently uh, a learning and development manager at the Cedar School. Uh, and he, he is involved in teacher training programs for all the campuses of that school network, I'm assuming. Uh, it's a network of schools. Yeah. And you develop curriculum for uh, that school as well. Um, and he is also an alumnus from uh, the LUMS undergraduate program back in 2014. Uh, I don't, uh, um, so um, I don't know, Fatima, did, are you also an uh, alumnus from LUMS? Alumna? Yeah, alumna? I'm 2017, yes. <laughs> okay, so thank you. Welcome, Humayu, and um, looking forward to speaking to you all. Thank you. So here we are again uh, sharing, uh, you know, these rich insights from uh, that everybody has to offer, particularly to our current students, and in particular to the students who have just joined the program uh, this fall. Um, and as you know, uh, you know, we're in the middle of this pandemic, this very challenging situation of remote interactions, and so these events are really, really important. And whatever you have to share about your journey, uh, you know, as, as people involved in education in whatever capacity, it is really, really valuable uh, for uh, particularly our students, but for the, in, also for the entire LUMS, uh, uh, you know, community. Uh, and so I would like to start off with the question that what brought you to the MPhil ELM program and uh, what are you doing now? And where, where do you see yourself going? to the future and uh, we can start with you Mary. So like you just mentioned uh, a little while ago, I've basically been involved in the private sector in education, primarily teaching and curriculum development. So for most of you know my career. Uh, what drew me to the SOE, uh, this ELM program was that I wanted to kind of um, 
enhance my capacity and you know kind of uh, improve my skill set and expertise and in order to make some kind of a contribution in the public sector with regards to education so um, basically this project that we have started and i just want to say right at the beginning that it is a joint initiative that uh, a colleague of mine who is also an alumni of lam shanila parveen so she and i uh, both kind of took this you know uh, joint undertaking of uh, you know kind of improving uh, the school called nasir khusro school uh, model academy in gulkin in hunza how we came about to doing that is a little bit of a long story so i'm not going to get into that lekin i can tell you a little bit that because hum dono ka research interest hai of educational transition in gilgit baltistan as as it's happening so rapidly over there and you know it's kind of changing the pura jo topographic maha uh, pe uh, scenario hai when it comes to uh, the community and uh, parents and you know teachers and students so um, we were in kind of in that quest of finding that out we were looking into private schools uh, community schools and government schools so this particular school which is nasir khusro which is uh, based in gulkin small village called gulkin in hunza ye is school ke andar ye khubi thi ke uh, you know after engaging with the students we kind of uh, felt that there was so much potential and there was so much room for improvement teachers were basically being given a pittance matlab their salary is absolutely you know next to nothing and lekin unki jo dedication thi unki jo chahat hai towards education and you know that commitment ki we want to educate ourselves and no matter what this is the tool that we want to use for development uh, that was so kind of inspiring and motivating and uh, we kind of kept going back and forth and you know speaking to the board of governors and so and so forth and finally we drew up a school improvement plan so i will say that a uh, school effectiveness and development course was i think quite effective in uh, you know helping us look at nasir khusro school in totality and you know kind of be able to figure out ke kaun se areas hain jahan pe hum unko school ko improve kar sakte hain unki kya discrepancies hain what are the kind of things that they need uh, assistance in that they need you know someone from the outside to come and tell them ki isko is tarah kar lo isko is tarike se handle kar lo so uh, we drew up a school improvement plan and we kind of spanned it over four phases so jo pehla phase tha usme humne teacher training ke bare mein socha ki you know we should uh, to motivate the teachers and to make them feel you know kind of good about themselves we should offer them a training workshop so that we did in uh, gilgit jo professional development institute hai in gilgit we were able to shanila and i both attended the workshop as well so it was like a week long workshop and we spent time with them got to know their problems their challenges and you know what are um, the obstacles that they are facing when it comes to imparting good quality education also we wanted to get to know the teachers and spend more time with them if we were to uh, work on something you know like a school improvement plan educational reform ke hawale se so both of our phase 1 and we were able to complete that next um, what is happening as we speak right now is uh, improvement in the physical you know kind of um, the physical effects kehte hain school effects kehte hain uh which is basically infrastructure and repair and maintenance etc 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 so as we speak we are working on that we've been able to collect funds for that we're very very happy for that um phir humne kuch fortunate ho gaye we've been able to get some technical assistance from a few offices of the un usme hame you know kuch lcds mil gaye hain things like that teacher training materials mil gaye hain train teachers mil gaye hain um early childhood ke materials mil gaye hain so we are focusing on the early childhood aspect you know early childhood section jo hai hamara primary years ka in the school because we feel ke isko agar strong karenge to enrollment badh jayegi you know abhi bahut se bacche jo hain gulkin ke wo neighboring schools mein chale jate hain neighboring villages mein and it's extremely costly for them to do that so this is the the, the area that we're trying to tackle currently 
uh, iske ilawa, uh, library you know books and things like that we should be able to get those from uh, uh, the un as well jo humne apne taur pe kiya hai wo humne ek lot installment kitabon ka inko bheja hai library ko and we have initiated a reading club we are also really pressing on you know kind of establishing that reading culture in the school uh, i shouldn't say it but luckily internet acha nahi chalta hai so the children have to use books so we are saying ki jab tak internet nahi hai aur wifi ki facilities nahi hai you know really put the pressure on the kids learning and you know using reference books and uh you know using the library effectively so we're doing that and uh, shanila and myself hum bi weekly we talk to the kids you know jo bhi unhone kitabe padhi hain we is a book review session that we have with them because we want them to be a little bit accountable ke jo pad rahe hain they should be able to share it and then that's a good way of engaging with us and uh, we are, we kind of keep in touch with the school that way with the students that way so ek ye hamara initiative hai um iske ilawa what we're trying to do is that we're trying to look at the this is the, the 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 this thing that i'm going to talk to you about right now is what we have just uh, done like a few days ago which is that we are looking at the teachers and uh, kind of trying to evaluate ki hum isme fresh blood kaise leke aa sakte hain kuch competitive salaries offer kare so that uh, i mean how much can you expect from someone if they're being paid 5000 rupees and despite the 5000 rupees i mean the dedication of the teachers is phenomenal and it's mind blowing and it really makes you feel like this is a place which is so underutilized or isko agar aap kuch prop up kar dein with resources to um, it can take off ab jahan tak iska future ki baat hai uh, we were very clear from the very beginning that we are not adopting this school we are not owning this school yes we are on the board of governors but we are only enabling it only facilitating it till it is able to stand on its own feet and kind of make its own decisions we'll always be involved in that process with the board because we have arranged the funding for it so we want to make sure that it's being used properly i mean that much wo to hamari responsibility hai but other than that uh we wanted to be like a model school jo ke hum uh, iske experience se hum uh, jo bahut far flung areas hain there is like chipperson there is um ishkoban there is uh, you know there is uh, deamir wali side hai i mean there is absolutely no schooling over there so um we want to be able to replicate this you know with the experience because we also need to kind of have some hands on ex- real experience in terms of you know uplifting a school or phir usko aage leke jana so something to that effect that's what we're trying to do um jo hamara last phase tha actually that is challenging that we uh, that will happen uh, basically the last phase is bringing in the aa khan uh, curriculum the aa khan uh, education board to the school um that cannot happen in the near future obviously pehle hum quality ko enhance karenge and after we have been able to enhance the quality of teaching in the school uh only then can we expect ke school mein enrollment badhegi aur uh, you know student outcomes behtar hoenge and um, basically the community will benefit from it and it's very rewarding for us so um i think maybe a few years into this and then we can think about you know improving it even more by bringing in the ahan board that's fantastic uh, thank you marine this is such an amazing initiative would love to know more about it as i'm sure uh, the people on this call would uh, and so i have many many questions and hopefully we'll get a chance to get to uh, other questions from audience also so uh, so we'll i'll come back to you so fatima uh, uh, would you like to share uh, a, a little bit about what you do it's a very different setting higher education so is this a change for you from what you did before or uh, were you always involved in higher education and uh, so tell us about your journey 
Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Razia. And Perin, your work sounds very, very fascinating. I think I was very excited to hear about it as well. So, uh, so basically, I think uh, my journey sort of started um, right after my undergrad. And I really hope Dr. Bai doesn't hear this part. But like economics really didn't excite me enough, I feel. So I was an economics major with the psychology minor. And I was always more interested in my minor than my major. But um, and after undergrad, I ended up working at a nonprofit um, in the education sector. So at that point, we were very involved in like um, early childhood and creating curriculum and creating books um, up to the fifth grade. So it was very it was very primary school centered and it was very uh, it was very rewarding in the sense that it was for underprivileged kids. It was uh, providing them not only with these fancy, beautiful, very inclusive books, but also different sorts of materials to do different activity-based learning um, things. And um, yes, I think Dr. Wari is upset about my economics comment, but like, so basically, so at that job, I really thought that working in the developmental sector is what really excites me a lot. So that's when the MPhil program was underway and I think they were building it. So I think I worked for about two years and then I decided to um, get into this degree because I felt like, um, that even though um, I even though I had work, I thought the work experience might not be sufficient alone to actually take on this role of an educationist because I feel like there needs to be that credibility that comes with it. So I was very excited about pursuing this degree. And uh, so the best part is that that's why I was very, very excited throughout the program. So I really enjoyed studying as uh, much of a nerd I might sound to the students now, but like I really enjoyed this program. So after that, um, because I had, uh, so I didn't really have a preference for what sort of years I want to work with after graduation, but I was fairly certain that I want to do a role where I'm not specifically teaching or I'm not specifically uh, just making curriculum. And I wanted, because I did feel throughout the program that the whole learning experience, it needs to be very holistic and comprehensive. So Luckily, this job that I did end up um, securing was, um, so basically this is a, both a research related role as well as a program development role. So uh, what this allows me to do is that there are different populations of students within LUMS. Uh, so one of the major populations that I work with um, are students from the outreach program. So these are scholarship students who uh, come to LUMS and like my role is to help develop programs to help them acclimate to LUMS. So when we say acclimate, it's not just that their academic well-being improve. Ho. It's also that their cultural shock. I think a lot of us felt that cultural shock, especially in undergrad when we entered LUMS. So if someone's coming from a very different city, so the cultural shock might increase even further. So the programs that we designed, they're aimed at um, improving their academic well-being, their non-academic well-being, like settling into LUMS, and also increase, improving their post LUMS outcomes. So improving their career readiness and uh, to, to make sure that, you know, LUMS is um, a vital enough experience that it really helps them succeed in life as well. So I think that is what kind of excites me about this job as well, because um, in case you get to look at the student as a complete whole and you get to like, you know, create a program like for every aspect that they might need support in. So, um, so as in, so basically, and for, I think, why SOE really helped me to um, like get here was that, again, I think um, we're all going to be talking about Dr. Gulab's class a lot. So school effectiveness. Um, and I feel like I took that class multiple times because I was his TA with Kamayo as well. So that was interesting because that class, as in, and it's not about the content, it's about how, you know, you learn how to look at a problem. So you look at a school in its very contextual reality, you really need to understand what the school is like and you really need to understand best practices to but for this school I need to make sure that those are tailored enough that you know they work so um, with this role in my job as well we get to research the research aspect of the job is very understanding not only what the best practices around the world are but also sort of seeing because it's data driven. So we want to see that this population ki, um, you know, status, how can we, where they're lacking and how can we improve that? 
so i feel like ke because you understand both the best practices and you understand the context so well that then creating a program not only feels more rewarding it also feels like something that might succeed better and like you know really work for them and then you know actually watching that program occur and then see ke acha usme glitches bhi aa rahe hain to kaise improve karna so it's been a very interesting very rewarding experience in that sense and i feel like if i want to talk about another class apart from dr gulabs i think that might be all my research related classes so that includes dr kesar's class and that includes um ethnography with dr sofia so because um ab just na agar mera research center role hai so usme like a lot of these skills as in i don't really remember every reading i did but i really remembered ki acha mere assignments pe jo mehnat lagi thi i can see that mehnat actually occurring in this uh, job as well so i think in a way those classes were very helpful to me as well so you know i i hope everyone's paying attention to their classes cuz it's helpful but so that's a little bit about my role and how this helps me um, sort of uh, plan my future is ki so right now and i know okay i'm an alumni twice now so i may, i should have maybe have this figured out but like i'm still confused okay do i want to continue working do i eventually want to pursue a phd so the kind of role that i'm doing it's both program implementation and research so i feel like okay, the door for me is open ke okay, maine uh, so i can like you know figure it out over the year or maybe the next two years so that's uh, really helpful and i think um, i uh, this felt like a closure but i just remembered i have to talk about the startup as well so the startup is something that um, so i think a lot of people at so we know about the startup at least our batch does so um, this was the startup was created last year when covid hit and we um, i think it's been yeah, yeah. so uh, once covid hit we started in the summer and this was started with three other members of the cohort as well so and uh, initially everyone from the cohort really pitched in as well and everyone helped create content for the page that we were uh, running for the lums um, mbm the uh, custodial staffs children so then eventually we decided to pitch this idea to the national incubation center for lahore and that's a place where they if they select your startup idea then they train you to sort of um like start your startup and like you know run it so we finished our training me and the four founders and right now we're in our phase where we're um, doing user research we're creating a lot of content around social emotional learning and uh, because we really want that because we really felt like especially covid helped us covid and even like this general state of pakistan really helps you realize ke uh, social emotional learning ki kitni zyada zarurat hai pakistan mein aur kitni zyada kami bhi hai so the idea is that you know we're trying to you know um, ca- capitalize on that gap and really kind of um, capture it and then really trying to help students to help children um, and they, this is for younger children and really help these younger children um, uh, fill in the gaps in their social emotional learning so the app is still like uh, in its developmental phases so uh, yeah so right now like you know keep watching our instagram page i guess <laughs> but yeah so that's a little bit about what i'm doing could you tell could you tell us the name of uh, your app so that we can look out yes yes it? I, yes it's basically it's called parvaze umeed we um, added a word to the uh, original name so yeah that's the name okay thank you humayun uh hello everyone um i feel mehreen and fatma they both are much as i say very energetic i'll try to match their energies um so i just like patna i am also a graduate from lums um i graduated in 2014 um just like patna i also did not really like um, economics as much but um having said that i used to take a lot of courses uh, from developmental economics because at the back of my head when i was doing my undergrad i always knew that i'm not going to work for corporate and i want to work i wanted to work in the development sector so um after graduating i ended up joining a civil society organization called society for international education um so it was also a you know education related organization where we used to kind of look at education not just as you know ki aap bachcho ko ja ke kuch sikha rahe ho padha rahe ho um likhna sikha rahe ho we used to um, kind of work on capacity building and kind of find um education as that you know enabling factor so um so instead of teaching students you know how to read or you know something like that we would try to give students some sort of skill 
Um, so I did this project called Humans of Yari in Karachi. Um, I don't know if you guys are familiar with Yari, if you have heard its name or not, but it's um, like, it's a very conflict prone area. Um, and so to teach those people to express themselves through writing, um, uh, we taught them photojournalism. So, you know, that they could take photos, upload them on Facebook, um, and kind of depict a positive image of Yari. And one of the stories got so famous that um, uh, there was this one painter, um, painting and he wrote that he wanted to gift it to Obama. And it became so famous that um, people from the embassy got involved and the painting was actually, um, you know, like bought from the person and now it is at the embassy. Um, so, so that's something that I did for one year after graduation. After that, I felt that, um, I needed to kind of move on because personally, um, I don't like monotony and I like to keep trying new things. So I ended up joining Cedar College. I'm working with Cedar School right now, but before that, uh, I was working at Cedar College. I started working there as a college counselor. Um, I worked in that role for a year. After that, um, I moved on to working as an academic counselor. Um, these two roles really allowed me to work with students and um, really, see the changes that you know that they go through um, in their personalities um, and I Korasa is a personal reason why I joined this um, you know organization for the particular role because when I was really young um, about 16 years old I ended up select, got, uh, getting selected for this program called youth exchange and study program um, it is an exchange program where they send students to the U.S. Uh, they spend about a year there in American high school, and then they come back after that once they're done with their studies. I felt that I was lucky enough to get selected for that program because I got the right kind of mentorship and guidance. And I felt that um, this role was allowing me to do that, really push the students to, you know, just not like a child engineering. There are so many other things that students can pursue. Um, after that, um, I worked in the admissions department and in the extracurricular department for two years. So collectively, I worked for four years um, with a high cost private um, college in Karachi. During this, um, I felt that if I really want to, you know, move towards a role where I, you know, really make an impact in the sense that um, learning students ki impact for you. I need to have the right kind of skill set, which I did not because the previous roles that I was a part of and the previous kind of jobs that I was doing, um, what managerial aspect admission But if you want to move towards you know curriculum development or uh, instructional design or something like that, for that you need the right kind of skill set. Something that, you know, like Marine and Fatma has already done, like Fatma has written books, Marine has done curriculum development. I had not done that. And um, <laughs> fun fact, not really a fun fact, but I'm also a nerd. I kind of miss Padai. So um, with, um, you know, SOE, um, it was offering a program that was kind of giving me, like, you know, when you go to a buffet and you want to try everything, I felt that SOE was doing that. So um, I ended up applying for it. Um, admission market. I loved all of my courses and I feel that uh, in the current role, I'm using all of my, um, all of the uh, courses in CTT, I think so that I'm applying them. Um, so currently I'm working as a learning oh, development coacher. Uh, I'm working as a learning development manager where uh, I am. I, I think so by mistake. Someone in the audience uh, has their mic unmuted. So please, uh, if I could request you to mute yourselves. Thank you. So um, I'm working at the Cedar School as the learning development manager. Cedar School um, is a like subsidiary branch of Cedar College. Um, and in 2019, they only had one campus, but now they have five campuses um, in different parts of the city. Um, I did get some job offers in Lahore, but the reason why I selected this particular uh, job is that um, it is allowing me to use whatever I have learned during my degree. 
So I remember there was this particular course I took education seminar series by Dr. Lana. The course concepts that I learned in that course, they are um, very helpful. They're coming in very handy. So for example, um, I felt that a lot of teachers, um, when they make their lesson plans, they do not really know that um, that the learning objectives that they need to decide um, for a particular lecture, you just cannot throw in fancy words like understand, learn. Like these are very abstract terms. You really cannot quantify, like, you know, observe which is actually going to be. So that um, other than that, um, cognition and computer, there was this one course that I took. And I'm also really using that because there are some instructional design, but we have some readings and I'm using those too. Um, basically, what I'm trying to get at is that during my degree, um, uh, I tried to take courses from different streams. I, I, some students, they were very um, particular about taking research-based courses because they wanted to go towards research sector. But with me, I wanted to keep my doors open. So I took courses from, you know, different streams. So I took, um, you know, ed tech courses, which courses liye, jase, um, Dr. Lonaka course tha, uh, education seminar series. Ka. So is the se, um, I tried to um, take as many different courses as I could so that once I graduate, I could go in any direction that I wanted. So that is uh, it for me. So, yeah. Okay, thank you so much uh, for sharing these really rich uh, pathways that you all took to uh, before coming to uh, LAMS uh, the SOE program and also as you move forward. Uh, all of you have spoken about how, um, you know, your learning or your experiences in the program helped you. Um, so I'm going to actually combine uh, in the interest of time and opening it up earlier to since there seem to be so many questions. Uh, so I just wanted to ask what sort of, uh, you know, to students who are in the program and students who are coming into the program, as you know, now we have an executive ELM program as well. So we have um, almost double the number of students. And so the community has become richer uh, and bigger. And so, you know, it would be really uh, interesting to know for them uh, that while they are in the program, what are the sorts of things, uh, you have already mentioned a few, but if there were one or two uh, things that you would specifically, each one of you would ask them to, you know, really, really uh, draw from or draw energy or knowledge or, um, you know, observation from that, what, would, what might those be? So, so anyone, um, um, maybe I can go first. Sure. Uh, so yeah. when I um, started my degree, I had this at the back of my head, and this is advice that I would like to give people: is that try to build connection with people um, who are, who you are with, because you will not get this opportunity ever again. Most of the people who are joining this program, they have the right intentions, and this is a good opportunity for you to network with them. So, for example, before joining this role, um, there were certain people from my batch who had done teacher training for quite some time and they had developed curriculum as well. So I used to take their help a lot. As a matter of fact, I'm still taking help from them because if I'm designing classroom observation tools, um, it is always um, a good idea to kind of run it by someone or ask somebody who has also gone already gone through the process so that they can tell you what are the tools and things. And that is really helping me a lot in my current role because um, since it is a new department and my school does not have anyone who has done that in the past, um, the insights that I uh, am able to share with them based on the experience of my you know, fellow classmates is really not just helping me, but uh, the organization and um, as a matter of fact, it's also helping the teachers and the students. So the ripple effect is just going you know, really far. So that's one thing that I would recommend that you should, um, you know, just don't fall into your comfort zone. It's very easy for people to um, find KG, okay, this is the person my bandwidth matches with, so I'm going to make my goods with that person. But that way, you're not really able to learn from the other person. There is a possibility that, you know, the other person end up teaching you something um, that you did not really know about. Uh, and you might end up using that skill um, sometime around in the future once you are done with this thing. So I would really urge you to, you know, just try to make as many diverse and different groups and try to learn from each other because you will never get this opportunity. And once you're out of the program, you all will get busy with your, um, you know, respective jobs and careers. So that's one thing that I would like to share. 
Absolutely. That's, uh, I mean, that's actually the beauty of an education program at the graduate level that people are coming from different, you know, uh, um, backgrounds and various degrees of experience or number of years of experience that there's so much peer learning going on. So great point. Thank you, um, Fatima. Yeah, I think I would just want to uh, one add to what Hamayo said that even like apart from just, um, you know, groups and like make, making groups and working with your peers, I think just paying attention to what they're saying in class, I think that was very valuable. Like there were times when I was so surprised with someone else's experience, ke wo, like, you know, wo kya kar ke aaye hai and everything, because like at the end of the day, we've all really lived in our little bubble and we've really seen our sorts of education systems as well. So apart from just hearing what the teacher says and like unke baat pe just pay attention, just pay attention to everyone, try to learn about, you know, their experiences because they're, as in that not only just helps you in your work, it really helps you think about things in a different manner. You know, diverse opinions, how do you have to absorb them and everything? And apart from that, like, I think one thing that I would um, suggest to everyone is that, you know, try to like really enjoy the projects you get in classes like as in I think that was my favorite component because the projects really allow you to sort of apply I know exams are important tests are important all those things are important CP is important but like when you actually apply that project to a school or you actually even if you're writing just a research paper based on what you've learned so that's where you know that's where it gets really exciting so really try to find some sort of joy in your project, even if it's getting annoying, even if it's very hard to work with your partners and all of that. Like, I think that's something that's very valuable and that's going to go a long way in when you're um, at, the, at whatever role you're at, because you will be making something new at some point. So I think that's something that I would suggest to everyone. Thank you, Fatima Amehri. Yeah, um, I'd like to say here that um, because I was joining school after 25 years, I mean, I did my last degree in 1994. So I had a very clear mind as to what are the skills that I lack, you know, what kind of skills I lack, and, and they are the ones that I really need to improve on. So even if that meant going out of my comfort zone, which is not necessarily taking the courses that I knew I'd be good at, you know, but, but uh, I still remember that after Dr. Sophia's orientation regarding the ethnography course, uh, you know, she said that, you know, your English language, you have to be really, uh, you know, very sure that you want to do this because this is really about expressing yourself. And I just went out and I said, Gosh, what am I doing, you know? how on earth am I going to be able to write so much? Because I've always been just, I have basically been a maths person and maybe you also remember that from school days. So, uh, you know, I was so much into, and I was an economics teacher for like number of years, 15 years. And so like going into a course, which was so descriptive and you're writing and you're observing, it was, uh, something in stark contrast to what I, so I would suggest that yes, get out of your comfort zone because grades are really not what uh, is going to get you, uh, I mean, of course they do matter, it's this whole debate about grades versus, you know, how you want to uh, kind of, uh, what journey you want to, you know, experience in your life. So wo sara kuch matter karta hai, lekin, um, do reflect, do sit down and reflect as to what contribution you want to make, what sort of um, career you want to follow, uh, what sort of a person you are, basically, you know, what is something that will uh, give you happiness and all those factors, bring those in as opposed to, you know, going into um, just following uh, and doing something which is very cliched. And you're just doing what the next door neighbor is doing and you're just doing it because you really can't think better. So to give yourself that moment to reflect on what you want to make out of your life. And then that's how you should base your trajectory at SOE. So that's what I'd like to say. Beautiful. I think that's that's really, really, I think, such an important thing you're pointing out, Marine, the ability to be reflective and also be able to see the specific thing that you learned in the broader context. I mean, I feel very much that education is a 
serving field you know you serve so and so you commit to serve so so in that sense it's it's a really great point to bring up um do you uh, want to add anything in addition before I open up for questions? Anything you forgot to say or, or you want to add? Any, any of you? So I, I add, so. okay, okay, okay. So, so I, I also have a few questions, but I'll hold them and, and I'll open it up to the audience first and to our students. Uh, so, uh, the floor is open for questions, everybody. So in the chat, or if you want to raise your hand and speak up either way. So we have 20 minutes uh, for question and answers to Humayo, Mehreen, and Fatima. I think earlier on, somebody had a question about, uh, would, could you talk for Mehreen? Uh, could, that could you talk about about the AKU curriculum? So I think you already touched on that. So is there anything you want to add, or if you could? Oh uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, no, I just wanted her to elaborate. Sorry, my connection is really bad, and I think it's because of the weather. So if I'm breaking, I'm really sorry about that. But I I just wanted her to elaborate uh, why AKU curriculum and what were the points? What made them decide that this is exactly what they are gonna pick? I just wanted her to elaborate uh, on that, please. If if it, sure. if that's possible, if she has time, I would yes. be grateful. Sure. Thank you. Sure. First of all, now the AKU curriculum is not following there. We will try and bring it in in the next couple of years. In order to be able to uh, make the school follow that curriculum, there are certain steps, you know, baby steps that need to be taken in a certain order, and that would take some amount of time. I'll tell you a little bit about the AKU curriculum. Uh, basically, it's a, it's an absolute stark opposite to rote learning. Um, textbooks However, there is a horde of reference books that are available. They are given a syllabus and then they have to kind of curate their own learning, you know. And that, and for that, I mean, आप जो भी किताबें use करना चाह रहे हैं, कारवान की use कर लें, Oxford University की use कर लें, Punjab textbook board की use कर लें. But it is that it is up to them, really, you know, to learn from whichever sources they want to learn. So एक वो curiosity, एक वो self accountability, वो responsibility of learning, you know, isn't really in your own hands, and that you're responsible for your trajectory. एक तो वो वाली aspect वो essential qualities जो हैं वो develop हो जाती हैं। Secondly, project based learning है, so इसमें you get to work with people, critical thinking है। Again, you know whether you're getting along or not, आगे जाके दुनिया में भी आपने सारे वक्त यही चीजें करनी हैं। You have to negotiate with people, you have to get along with them, so वो सारा कुछ भी सिखाते हैं। वो project based learning is something which is the international baccalaureate, which is called IB, its crux. So I, because I have been involved with IB for a number of years, so I feel that the AKU curriculum, which in some ways is a low-cost IB, that, you know, is available to us and should definitely be looked into because it's a system where uh, things are really not being given to you. I mean, a teacher is not coming in and just kind of disseminating information from a certain textbook in a certain way and then walking out. There's a lot of, um, you know, back and forth learning between the student and the teacher. And um, like I said before, there's a lot of accountability. And you can learn from reference books and you know, learn and so on and so forth. Does that kind of answer your question? So, Marine, uh, uh, yes. <laughs> yeah, go ahead, no. Go, uh, no, 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 sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I was just, uh, I was, I was just okay. I think she didn't read the chat, so it's okay because uh, this year they are bringing SNC as well. I wanted her to, if she can add something on that. If okay. Look, one thing, SNC is such a controversial topic that I really don't want to get into it at this point. Uh, I think that's bringing in SNC. understandable. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I mean, 
SNC is is, is not. Uh, I don't think. Uh, I, I don't really want to talk about it. It's optional. Hai. Kuch log isko adopt. Kuch provinces adopt kar bhi sakti hai, but kuch amendment ke mutabik zaruri nahi hai ki aap isko adopt karein. But some parts of it are necessary, and uh, I don't want to say more about it because I'm not familiar with actually AKU. <laughs> totally unit. understandable. No. Yeah. Yeah, they are because I'm 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 currently doing a, a elder education course with them, and they are let us go through the SNC. So thank you so much for your time, and thank you. I really appreciate you for thank taking you. the time out. Thank no you. Welcome. Thank you, Dr. Bari. You have a question. G. Um, so two questions, but but only just be order. If 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 there is time, um, may you need to reflect on the dynamic that you need to set. in a school as small and maybe as marginalized as the one that you and shanida took over how do you set a dynamic that leads to higher quality um, happening in the classroom and how do you keep a check on that ki wo hota rahe aur wo dynamic sustainable rahe so that's for mehreen aur agar ijazat ho to humayun ke liye humayun tell us a little what what's every day like what do you do the entire day what are the kind of things that you focus on etc mujhe bhi puri aapki job ki puri total nature nahi samajh aayi thi sorry acha i'll take that first otherwise i'll forget the question um acha so uh, jo dynamic hai aap ye keh rahe hain ki us dynamic ka momentum kaise hum sustain karenge basically aur wo dynamic hai bhi kya meri wo dynamic wo dynamic basically ownership hai i think uh, ownership of you know education and commitment towards education jo uska crux hai jo education ka essence hai basically and that i think uh, the spark that we see and that assists us in our process is uh, coming from the students jo humne conversations kari students ke sath kuch environment ke bare mein kuch different aur cheezon ke bare mein i mean they were it was mind boggling Uh, जो उनका इंथुजियाजम था जो उनकी इंगेजमेंट थी एंड आई फेल्ट कि वो इतने लिमिटेड तरीके से अभी ऑपरेट कर रहे थे एंड येट दे वर एबल टू यू नो एग्जिबिट द काइंड ऑफ इंथुजियाजम कह लें या एग्जिबिट द काइंड ऑफ नॉलेज कह लें सो एक तो कुछ डायनामिक वो है उनके अंदर कोई स्पार्क है जिसको हम कैप्चर करना चाह रहे हैं जो आपका सवाल है ना कि ये जो डायनामिक एक तो क्या है और इसको कैसे सस्टेन करेंगे इसको टीचर सस्टेन कर सकती हैं दे कैन ब्रिंग इट आउट फ्रॉम द स्टूडेंट्स बिकॉज टीचर्स देम नॉट ऑल बट सम ऑफ देम आर एक्सट्रीमली डेडिकेटेड टू यू नो ब्रिंगिंग दिस थिंग आउट इन द स्टूडेंट्स एंड टू मेक that process and you know to make progress in this uh, in this direction wo kafi keen hai and mujhe hame aise laga jaise ki unko agar aap thodi si bhi koi guidance de rahe hain ya thoda sa bhi kuch humne jaise reading culture ki baat kari aur humne kaha ki hum reading club ke andar is is tarike se cha rahe hain ki hum students ko accountable kare students leke jaye kitab pe wapas aaye hum se engage kare so we felt ke um, the teachers are um, are our best friends in this you know whole process i mean wo itna hame uh, unka jo response hai towards this wo khud itna uh, positive hai ke agar hum wo jagah jo hai wo actually ripe hai is cheez ke liye usko thodi se agar aap fortify kar dein to it will bounce itself it will roll itself so uh, we feel ke <clears throat> uh, this process can take place over there agar usko ek sahi tarike se guidance di jaye does that help in what you were trying to get at ji thank you ma'am okay so now i'll quickly uh, talk about my uh, job um, you are i i can understand uh, dr bari that आपको सही समझ में बिकॉज आई वॉज नॉट एज थ्रो एज दू सो बेसिकली दिस इयर ओनली 
सीडर हैज ओपन अबाउट फोर डिफरेंट ब्रांचेस सो पहले उनके पास एक ब्रांच थी एंड दे ओनली हैड अबाउट 15 टू 16 टीचर्स दैट दे हैड टू लुक आफ्टर सो इट वाज वेरी इजी फॉर देम टू मॉनिटर हाउ टीचर्स आर टीचिंग एंड इफ द क्वालिटी ऑफ यू नो द ब्रांड दैट द सीडर इज ट्राइंग टू यू नो ऑफर टू स्टूडेंट्स इफ दे आर यू नो लाइक मीटिंग क्वालिटी गाइडलाइंस but now since they have more than 90 teachers they want to ensure that uh, their standards do not go down um so that's where my department comes in so i have to set this department what i usually um do is that i look at the um lesson plans of the teachers other than that i also see the areas where teacher need uh, teachers need training um aaj se hi hamari um uh, training workshop start hum hai there was one thing that i realized that they are what they are not doing is that they have some really experienced teachers and other teachers can really capitalize on their experience so we have miss linet vikiji she is uh, zoe vikiji's um, mother and she has been teaching english literature for about 35 years so now um, um, i thought that maybe you know she should start conducting these workshops so that you know she can train other teachers who are teaching the same subject because we have about 15 teachers who are just teaching english and english literature so that's one aspect um the second thing that i do is that um uh, so we are having these uh, um you know training sessions for people from all different school, all the different schools um in pakistan so we are going to be having these uh, this edtech conference i'm going to be leading that um uske alawa main policies ko dekh raha hu ki there were so many policies um that they didn't really modify so their academic policy their uh, you know their assessment policies and all that so i am looking into that um so um other than that um they did not have any specific uh, classroom observation um so i designed those i started conducting classroom observations to see how teachers are uh, exactly engaging students and all that so um this is how my day usually looks like and that you know there are other tasks as well that i do but this is what i'm currently doing um at the cyber school thank you uh, so marine another question uh, maida is asking if uh, your the model that you are uh, you know are trying to develop will can it be uh, applied to cities or other cities such as lahore of course it's nothing unusual that we're trying to do we're not trying to reinvent the wheel क्योंकि एक तो हमारे मुल्क में इतनी ज़्यादा ज़रूरत है कि यू नो लिटरेसी को आगे ऑब्वियसली इन्हांस किया जाए इसमें हम कोई डिफरेंट मॉडल या कोई मुख्तलिफ किस्म की कोई भी चीज़ कोई न्यू तरीके से नहीं करना चाह रहे जस्ट ट्राइंग टू सी कि अगर एक पर्टिकुलर स्कूल है उसके क्या मसले हैं कोई एक बहुत एलिमेंट्री और बेसिक लेवल पर अगर वो हम मसले पूरे कर सकते हैं किसी भी कैपेसिटी में चाहे पूरे ना कर आई मीन देर वर सर्टन थिंग्स दैट वी वर वर्किंग ऑन एंड वी वर स्टक ऑन देम फॉर मंथ्स एंड फाइनली यू नो वी बोथ डिसाइडेड दैट वी गिव इट अप बिकॉज इट्स जस्ट नॉट गोइंग इन दैट डायर डायरेक्शन जो जब करना चाह रहे हैं उसमें कोई ऑब्स्टिकल आ रहा है कोई मसला आ रहा है सो वी अबैंडन दैट एंड वी सेट लेट्स लुक एट इट रियलिस्टिकली वॉट इज इट दैट वी कैन डू हाउ मेनी फंड कैन वी रेज अफकोर्स वी वॉन्ट कि हम ये भी कर लें और वो भी कर लें बट लेट्स बी रियलिस्टिक तो एक मिनिमम लेवल के ऊपर यू नो वी फेल्ट के जो कुछ चीज़ें हम प्रोवाइड कर सकते हैं वो हम इनको प्रोवाइड करेंगे जो मेंटोरशिप कर सकते हैं जो भी कुछ हमारी कैपेसिटी में हमारी एक्सपर्टीज है वो हम ऑफर कर सकते हैं वो कर देते हैं एंड वट एवर वी कैन डू सिटिंग हेयर एंड देन वी कीप विजिटिंग इट एवरी थ्री मंथ्स एज वेल दैट वॉट टाइम वी कैन स्पेंड ओवर देयर एंड वे फिजिकली विद दैम तो इट्स नथिंग that cannot be replicated at all i mean you can take any school in lahore and visit them uh, ye to jo khas school hai ye community based school hai so agar yahan pe bhi koi school hai jo community based hai usko aap visit kar sakte hain aur usme dekhein ki uske kya masle hain at a very bare minimum level you know try to uh, find do some troubleshooting and find some solution for it so yes very much replicatable Okay. Are there any more questions from the audience? I was told there were lots of questions. So while you all decide for the remainder of your questions, I have a question, and I was this is uh, not to anyone in particular, but uh, anyone can respond. So you know, all of your, all three of your uh, career trajectories, they uh, indicate 
going into another community and changing something or 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 you know making or 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 facilitating some kind of uh, shift towards some sort of well-being whether it is the well-being of education of students of colleagues of teachers etc so i'm curious you know you came to a leadership and management program so how did it shift your perspective of how you go you know when you go into a community and with the perspective of changing it's a very sensitive and um, you know, you have to be really careful, uh, especially culturally speaking, if you look at the context of our, you know, culture and environment and how rigid our education systems for the large part have been like primary and secondary education. Um, so, so what are the learnings that you took away from the program in, in those terms? Did it change uh, the way you might have uh, approached them before and, you know, how and I'm not, I don't expect you will solve it, okay? like what are some of the things that you might want to share with your uh, juniors, you know, your uh, the, the current students, what are the things that are, you know, like sort of paradigm shifters for you in terms of going through the program with regard to going towards education change or education reform in whatever capacity in the different uh, situations that you're working in. Yeah, so anyway. Uh, Okay, I'd yeah. like to add here that I faced uh, not a lot of problem, but like I faced, uh, I, I also felt like an outsider. And uh, the fact that we were a team and Shanila belongs to Hunza, so that gave us a lot of access, obviously, and that helped. But uh, I think what I will definitely say that I took away from the course was that really we were not going into, uh, we made it very clear from the very beginning that we don't want ownership of the school. We don't want our names coming there or anything of the sort. We just want to come in there and uh, help in whatever capacity we can, because we've been studying for two years, all these subject specialist courses and things like that. So uska koi fayda to hona chahiye na? And for me, uh, like I said before, when it's not calm here in private sector, mein, or mera, uh, you know, interest in coming to LUMS was to able to enable myself to confidently walk out you know, into a school of that nature and uh, not into a hi-fi school, but like into a low-cost school, community ka school, um, and be able to work with them at whatever, jitni bhi aapko wo space denge. So I think I've made my space, you know, over the uh, saal bhar hume ho chuka hai. So I think I've made my space and they've kind of accepted me like uh, somewhat of an insider. And that has been primarily because... Uh, हम वो मैंडेट के साथ नहीं आए कि हम आपका स्कूल ले लेंगे आपसे और उसको ये कर देंगे और इट्स फैंसी जार्गन नथिंग ऑफ द सॉर्ट यू नो इट वाज बेसिकली कि वी जस्ट वांट टू एनेबल यू वी वांट यू टू डू दिस योरसेल्फ यू आर ऑलमोस्ट देयर और यू हैव लॉस्ट योर वे बिकॉज़ ऑफ लैक ऑफ रिसोर्सेज या कोई गाइडेंस नहीं आई किसी ने आपको अटेंशन नहीं दी है उस एरिया में फॉर सो लॉन्ग बिकॉज़ कुछ और स्कूल्स नेबरिंग जगहों पे खुल गए हैं वहां पे बच्चे चले गए हैं एक स्कूल है जो कि डिलैपिडेटेड हो गया है डिसरिपेयर में है निगलेक्टेड है पीटर्स चले गए हैं सो आई थिंक दैट काइंड ऑफ हेल्प सो द कोर्स डेफिनेटली डिड हेल्प इन यू नो दैट थिंग ऑफ मोबिलाइजिंग द कैपेसिटी ऑफ अदर्स वाज ऑलवेज एट द बैक ऑफ आवर हेड्स कि दैट्स वी व्हाट व्हाट वी वांट टू डू वी डोंट वांट टू डू दिस यू नो आवर सेल्फ एंड नीदर कैन वी वी हैव डिफरेंट एजेंडास दैट वी आर यू नो काइंड ऑफ ट्राइंग टू फॉलो इन आवर लाइफ्स और भी हम चीजें करना चाह रहे हैं सो वी जस्ट वांट टू बी देयर टू काइंड ऑफ यू नो मोबिलाइज देम एंड देन जस्ट सिट एट द पेरिफेरी सो या डेफिनेटली द कोर्स वाज इंस्ट्रूमेंटल इन ओके थैंक यू एनीवन एल्स आई थिंक आई वुड जस्ट लाइक सॉर्ट ऑफ ऐड दैट so when i started working at lums you know i assumed that this is a space that i would know this is a space that i'm very familiar with for years now but i still felt an alien to it because now i was not a student i was someone who was sort of serving the students i was in the i was there in a very administrative capacity so i think the most um, sort of um, the biggest takeaway that i took from the managerial leadership aspect of um, soe was that now i really needed to see that now there are different stakeholders involved and i and what my role here is so the way you sort of pitch an idea how you sort of frame it how you get everyone on board with what you're pitching i think that's very important and like that's something that 
um, I think in a way we also learned from leadership because we really learned to take everyone's opinions in. We learned to realize that shayad, you know, what I am saying might not be the best outcome and the best suggestion for all, and it might be better to take in all these different perspectives and then sort of frame your suggestion. So I think that sort of pause moment where you realize that you don't know everything. I think that's a very valuable sort of takeaway that I took from the leadership aspect of the course. Yeah. Um, for me, the major takeaway would be that um, to, in order to you know um, implement anything, you really need to get the buy-in of the people you are trying to you know like introduce any project. So, for example, um, when I started doing classroom observations, the first thing that I felt that there was this sense of um, uncomfortability in the classes because the teachers felt that they were under scrutiny. And that is something that um, we discussed in one of the um, discussions in our school effectiveness course. Um, but when I was actually in that situation, like that entire conversation was coming to my mind that, okay, people really spoke about this and like it is actually really true that people are seeing me as, you know, like the other. Um, so in that case, um, I felt that um, the course really helped me to, you know, really understand that I have to gain the trust and the buying um, of the people, uh, you know, that I'm working with. So in order to do uh, that, I wanted to do a need analysis form and I wanted the teachers to fill out this survey. But you know, um, when you circulate these surveys, people have this sense that our name is going to go. People will know that I don't want to do this thing and they will feel me incompetent because at the end of the day, I'm the one who is you know, filling out the observation form and sharing it with you know, the CEO and the head of the entire school system. So, um, so I just made that um, survey anonymous. And just that one small thing, um, and you know, that is something that we learned in our, um, you know, uh, research courses as well, that anonymous, 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 uh, and that really helped me, you know, get a lot of responses from the teachers, I feel. Um, so I would say that that was one of the key takeaway for me from the program is to just, in order to implement anything, just get the buy-in of the people first. Very good. Thank you. Uh, Mehreen, uh, did you see there's a question for you? Why Hunza? Why not some other? So they're saying that Sajad is saying that uh, Hunza is already a well-served uh, place in terms of literacy and education. So why not other more deprived areas? So that's one question. Yeah. Okay. Um, let me start off by saying that um, I agree with you, but in Aakhan schools, the presence of the Gilgit Baltistan, if we talk about high schools, ki agar hum baat karte hai, there are only five high schools that the Aakhan Foundation is supporting. So yes, there are smaller jo levels ke upar unke schools, hote hai, but they are not, uh, uh, there are very few of them actually. I mean, the, maybe at some stage, the presence was a lot more than now. Um, secondly, it was easier to start off over there. Let's just, I, we wanted to gain some experience on how to do this. Kis kis ke challenges aayenge, kis kis ke problems, kis kis ke obstacles aayenge, hum unko kaise overcome karenge. So we didn't want to start off with a place jahan pe ek to school ke hawale se hi hume zada kuch nahi pata hai, ki wo humne kaise karna hai. And then the community is so hostile. So once we've done this, this was our intention that we will make a model school banayenge. from where we have done, we have learned our mistakes and we have done everything uh, you know, through reflection and through doing, uh, trying out different options. Uh, we have kind of uh, you know, understood that now we have to the far-flung areas, which are hostile to this development. So, in a way, you can say that this is a groundwork, this is a base for us just to learn how to be able to take this mission forward, you know, something to that effect. Okay. So, uh, I think now we're at the end of our time uh, allotment. So, um, Dr. Bari is asking, what, when are you inviting us to the school? Anytime, uh, sir. 
आप जब भी आना चाह रहे हैं जस्ट लेट अस नो वी टेक यू हैप्पीली टेक यू देयर या मे बी वी शुड ऑल गो ऑन अ फील्ड ट्रिप टू uh yeah thank you so much and so do you have any last thoughts moving forward where do you see so i'm curious if you if you like can quickly you know kind of in a sentence each say or a couple of sentences um where do you see yourself or what do you see yourself doing in a few years time after these projects that you're already involved in are wrapped up and so neri Uh, मैंने तो अभी बताया कि आई सी माई सेल्फ यू नो इन इन लाइक इन अ प्लेस लाइक चिपुरसन और लाइक इन अ प्लेस लाइक इश्कोमन और लाइक इन ध्यामीर और सम प्लेस एंड वर्किंग विद यू नो सिमिलर स्कूल्स सो दैट्स व्हाट आई सी माई सेल्फ डूइंग इन अ फ्यू इयर्स टाइम ओके फॉर मी इट वुड बी Pursue PhD. I think I have the capacity. Tell me, after us, to say that one thing is that you have to have that thing. Discipline should be there. Or do PhD. I think I have that. So uh, that's the plan. But like, let's see. After a year or two, not right away. Fatma. I think for me, um, I'm still like figuring out if I want to take the PhD route or stick to this sort of program and implementation. But like whatever it is, it's going to be in a field that sort of um, puts together like mental health and um, education. So that's the general area, and I'm like still figuring out how to achieve that. So yeah. Thank you. Uh- all wonderful directions and very we would be very curious to know what happens a few di- few years down and we would love to have you back uh, to share your journey as you move uh, into the future thank so thank you so much uh, mehreen humayo fatima for your valuable time and your insights which i'm sure are really very very helpful for some of our uh, especially incoming students thank you for taking the time out to be with us uh, thank you audience colleagues uh, students alumni if there are any uh, for being with us this evening and we will see you soon for another session of alumni connect uh, i suppose soon thank you so much khud hafiz uh, stay safe be well Thanks. Bye bye thank you thank you, thank you.